about 0.1% or less of all microbes discovered were actually harmful, which means 99.9% right. are either benign or friendly. I'm Maggie UMD. I am a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform Protocol to help turn around any autoimmune disease around naturally. And Kiran, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. So I'm Kiran Krishnan. I'm a research microbiologist with a heavy focus on the last uh, 10, 15 years in the, in the human microbiome and how the gut microbiome and other biomes, all the microbes in and around us, how they impact our overall health. And best of all, what are the healing opportunities within this uh, powerful ecosystem of microbes in order to improve outcomes. One of the solutions you guys just learned is deal with your digestion. For populations who's really working on clearing, let's say SIBO or certain types of gut infections, adding something like MegaGuard or using a product like MegaGuard can be helpful because it really thins the bile to help the bile. Like when it squeezes, it drains that area. It actually expels not just the bile acids, but also the bacteria with it. That right. prevents reinfection over and over again through the bile. So digestion is really key. Number two, let's talk about commensal organisms. Can you explain what commensal organisms are? These are organisms that, that exist naturally within your system. Keep in mind that we have more microbes than anything else in our body. We have more microbial cells than human cells. We have far more microbial DNA. We have about 150 times more microbial DNA than human DNA in our system. And so we have lots and lots of organisms that we're born with that we end up harboring for the rest of our lives. Uh, and they play a very, very important role in our functionality. These organisms are co considered commensal because we eat and feed with these organisms and they control the egregious organisms. That's the best way of controlling uh, these organisms. So even if you look in the outside world, right, the places with some of the highest risks of, of picking up really significant infections are the most sterile places, right? Places hospital. like hospital, right? <laughs> right. The places yeah. where they use the most uh, significant yeah. amount of cleaners and all to try to sterilize things. That's where you have the highest risk of picking up infections. It's, it's easier to pick up a drug resistant bacterial strain in a hospital than it is going out. Rolling in dirt. Exactly. Right. Because the woods and the dirt and all that have a very diverse set of microbes. And the microbes are really good at controlling and competing with other microbes. I did an article for U.S. News and World Report a long time ago. They had asked to interview me about this whole idea of drug resistant strains and, yeah. you know, this diminishing microbiome. And for that article, I did a calculation around the, the percent of, of microorganisms that are actually harmful to us that can yeah. cause disease. And based on a kind of a cursory uh, calculation on, on the literature that exists around this topic, I concluded that it was about 0.1% or less of all microbes discovered were actually harmful, right? Which means 99.9% right. .9 are either benign or friendly, right? And But we put so much emphasis on that 0.1% all the time. And we have all mm -hmm. these agents, these cleaning agents and antimicrobials and drugs and antibiotics and all to go after the 0.1% the when one of the best ways to control them is to allow the 99.9% .9 to flourish. That 99.9% .9 are your commensals. And so if you're conducting behaviors that really support your commensals, then it makes your system much harder to infect and invade. So, you know, in our program, we also just think about diversity with a lot of different types of bacteria. Um, in our program, we rotate multiple probiotics. Mm -hmm. I like a variety for, and I also think that we're getting more and more towards targeted um, probiotic therapy for certain right. conditions as well. But one of the things we've added has been a spore probiotic into the rotation. Right. I want for you to explain how and why people should consider adding Megaspore. Where does Megaspore come from? How does it increase diversity uniquely compared to other probiotics? Yeah. So spores are a very, very interesting category of probiotics. They do some very specific things that a lot of other probiotics don't do. So they're a nice complement to other probiotics that you may be taking. Um, so let's talk about in nature how you would encounter a spore. 
right? And, and what the role of a spore is. A spore forming probiotic is basically a probiotic bacteria that can cover itself in a calcified protein like armor when it's not in its ideal growth environment, right? So if it's a commensal spore, meaning it's a spore that lives naturally in the human gut, the moment it leaves the human gut through defecation, it's going to cover itself in the spore coat. And it can remain dormant outside of the body for upwards of 50 million years, right? Some of the oldest spores that have been found are 50 million years old, sitting in, in salt crystals in caves, ancient caves, and they can extract the spores out and still grow them. Despite them being so old, they've been sitting there dormant, waiting to be consumed. And so they're in the outside environment. You consume them. That armor-like coating allows them to survive past the gastric system. The moment they get into the small intestine, they realize that they're in there because they have these membrane structures that stick out of the spore to recognize the environment. So when they recognize that they're in the intestines, they come out of the spore state, and then they start flourishing in the gut. Now, one of the very first important things that they do in the gut is something called quorum sensing, where they read the microbial environment. They can read all the different bacteria's chemical signature to understand what microbes are there uh, and at what levels. Now, if they see that the pathogens or the opportunistic organisms are too high, they'll go and they'll sit next to or surround those organisms. They'll produce compounds to limit the growth of those organisms or they'll fight with those organisms for space and nutrients. So they're really, really effective at bringing down the levels of opportunistic and pathogenic organisms without damaging anything else. Now, at the same time, they also produce compounds that feed some of our keystone bacteria and our commensal organisms to regrow those organisms to a higher level. So they completely reorchestrate and rebalance the microbiome. You know, we know, I'll, I'll give you a really brilliant example of, of both of these. One, what we call competitive exclusion. Competitive exclusion is the ability in, of one microbe to exclude or eliminate another microbe, right? So the spores are very strong competitive exclusion agents. We've published, I think, two studies now with Cleveland Clinic on the ability of those spores, for example, to compete with Clostridium difficile. And we know Clostridium difficile is a very difficult, complicated infection in people. And what they were able to show in this publication is that they can administer the, the spores in Megaspore. They will go in, the R spores will identify Clostridia. It'll surround it and it will actually steal iron and other minerals away from the Clostridia, starving it to death. So it, it does so in such an amazing, intelligent way. And at the same time, we've published studies showing that when you add the spores in, it increases a keystone species 10 to 100 fold in growth. So you, these are the spore, these are the uh, gut orchestrators, if you will. They'll get in there and start shifting the balance of microbes in an important way. It's so fascinating to me that we are educating people about infection. Everybody wants to talk about infection. And <clears throat> we've talked about how digestion is really important. We've talked about um, how having commensal organisms that are in there, including a spore probiotic is really important. These are actionable things that you can do right now. One of the reasons why uh, digestive for us is our top selling product, to be honest, and the most rebought. I think to me, just even the first step of digestion, which is low stomach acid, 90% of people with autoimmune disease have. And then you add on top of it, gallbladder problems, people with gallbladder removal, not to even mention genetic pancreatic enzyme deficiency, uh, and then the last step of digestion, I think, is fermentation with your bacteria. So yeah. there's all these different steps in digestion. So for me, digested covers like 90% of those steps, right? So yeah. digested, I have pe everybody in our program. It's a must. If they take one with small meals, two with big meals, it contains the ox bile to mm -hmm. actually digest. So it's just literally food for thought with digestion. If you wanted to learn more about the transform program, there is a link in chat for you to book a chat with our team.